Welcome to the forest. It's a little chilly out here today. We're gonna make a fire. Let's go. Fire making is a skill that I believe everybody should possess. Not necessarily because you're worried about the apocalypse and you're going to have to run out into the wilderness and build a fire to hunt and cook food and <laughs> some sort of survivalist situation, but it's a useful tool to always have in your back pocket just in case you really do need it. For instance, you're out hiking, something happens, you get lost, you might need to start a fire. It's obviously a really good skill to have. Everybody needs to know how to do it. In our modern day society, we've lost a lot of our old world skills. Keeping them alive is a good thing. Making a fire can be very frustrating if you haven't done it before. So preparation is actually the key to making a really good fire the first time you try. Take your time, get yourself set up, and do it right the first time, and it'll be pretty easy for you. It's also important to know a little bit about the basic science of what makes a fire. You need three components to make a fire. You need heat, fuel, and oxygen. Without those three things, there is no fire. Now that you understand some of the science behind it, let's go collect our fuel. Come on. some sort of tool. A hand saw or you can cheat like I do and bring your old saws off. Oh yeah, work smarter not harder. <laughs> any of these crazy music videos? I mean, <laughs> who comes up with these dance moves? I mean, really, who comes up with them? There's this one dance move that they do in these music videos that every time I see it, I just roll laughing. It's absolutely hilarious. I mean, holding your leg, jumping up and down with your hand behind your back. What in the world is up with that? I have a new dance move. It's called, I have bumped my shin at work dance move. It's the newest and latest craze. You should try it the next time you're on the dance floor. 
Go ahead. It's going to be really popular. So after you have collected all of your material, you're going to segregate everything. You need your tinder, your small sticks, which is your kindling, and then your larger burning material very important to segregate everything and once you get everything all segregated and ready to go we can start building in the fire pit let's go so what we're going to be doing today is what's called a TP fire lay you'll get to see exactly what it is oh and for you bushcraft experts out there don't you tell me it's supposed to be called a wigwam wigwam that's a wigwam that ain't no TP that's a wigwam just Shut up and go back to your bushcraft channels. As you'll notice, we put the smaller, easier to burn material in there. And then we just slowly build up the material on the outside, getting larger material, larger sticks as we move outward. This is the best way to build a fire. Just don't be out there trying to start a fire in your mom's backyard. <sighs> Neighbors are going to get angry. Your mom's going to get phone calls. The next thing you know, they're going to be calling you a firebug. Oh, look, there's a little pyro over there. So kids, do not do what I do. Do not do what I do. <laughs> I feel warmer already. So the key is just be patient. Take your time, take your time, take your time, take your time when you're building your fire lay. And once you have it built right, the fire will just take right off. Pretty simple, pretty easy, but it does take practice. Get out there, go try it. Practice, practice makes perfect. And now that you've seen the panda fire making techniques used in the illustrious forest cooking videos, I double dog dare you to go out and try to do it yourself. Just practice. It's fun. It's an educational experience. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode just as much as I did, and I will see you on the next Bad Panda videos. You're coming back. <laughs> you know you are. Come on. <laughs>